in Europe, you had about $116 billion invested in 2021, which was up about 150% compared to 2020. So again, a huge increase. You can see on this map in, e in the EU where they had uh, the most growth in VC investment by country. The UK clocking in at 116%. Sweden's on here. I think that's interesting. Um, you know, there's actually a number of like Klarna on the buy now, pay later Swedish company. There's actually a number of really big unicorns developing there. Lithuania, 990%. I mean, Vinted's out of Lithuania. We um, have talked a lot about Vinted and Depop, one of the top two kind of clothing, uh, secondhand clothing marketplaces, a huge success story out of Lithuania. Germany, 150%. Um, Spain, 120%, France, 50%, Portugal, 50 Italy, 165 I've talked about the EU kind of having a, uh, you know, a lost generation where they weren't investing in technology. They weren't doing any tech protectionism like China did to, to keep the U.S. tech monopolies out of Europe, where, you know, there wasn't as much investment in the, in the tech community in Europe. There was then a lot of aggression from U.S. tech monopolies coming in to fill that vacuum. And as a result of that, the overall kind of EU tech economy um, and startup economy has not been as strong as the United States. And, you know, then you compare that to China and we've obviously China, a world class tech community as well, using tech protectionism as a key mechanism for that. So you're certainly seeing a lot of positive notes here with the EU with you know, $116 billion invested in 2021 in over 80 new unicorns in 2021, all out of the EU. It, it, it's still um, a, you know, a, a pretty wide margin away from where the United States is. Is it catching up? I mean, it's making a lot of progress. It's not a lost generation anymore, but you can see there's still a lot of ground for them to cover to get to where the US VC community is, tech community is, also where China's tech community is. Will it get there? Uh, you know, will there be parity between the US and EU from just, you know, let's say a dollars, number of unicorns, these kinds of things? It needs A, more time, and B, it needs uh, the right policy from regulators to put their tech startups at a greater advantage than other foreign, whether it's US or China. A lot of Chinese tech monopolies are trying to come into Europe also. We have seen some positive things with the EU policy regulators trying to go after tech monopolies. Um, but we've also seen a lot of blunders like GDPR, where GDPR actually hurts smaller tech companies trying to operate in Europe and it benefits the large tech monopolies. We've covered this many times on the show like a Google and a Facebook, because they've got all the resources to comply with GDPR. And meanwhile, smaller tech companies, it's a, it's a resource drain on them, and they don't have infinite resources like a tech monopoly does. So, you know, I, I think it's been a mixed bag in terms of how policy and regulators in the EU have been able to structure their agenda to really, you know, uh, drive value to the tech community. Tech communities kind of just had to figure this out on their own, frankly. Not too much benefit from the regulators. I'd say if that changes, if the regulators get their act together, which is a big if, then yeah, you're going to see them get there faster. If we're being a realist, I wouldn't put any faith in the regulators doing the right thing, because why would you? They haven't done the right thing for the past 20 years. Um, they're slowly starting to you know, pick up on what to do with tech monopolies, but oof, that's been a slow, long road. The U.S. regulators are even worse, though, frankly. So I think, I don't know, I think it's going to take at least another five to 10 years before you really start to see potentially kind of what true parity between the two tech ecosystems in the EU vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. In that five to 10 year period of time, I expect we're going to see a a massive tectonic shift in development platform, right? So kind of every 10 to 20 years, you see like the internet come out, smartphones come out, right? What's the next kind of tectonic shift in how and what you're building software for? Is it the metaverse, AR, VR, cars and autonomous cars? Is it, right, all these different kind of development platforms? I don't know, but I think that's going to be a huge factor to say, 
what community is going to really find the next thing and then really embrace the next thing and 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 create all these new tech startups on top of the next dominant development platform don't know lots of things that could come up on the horizon over the next five to 10 years. But but the EU is still a number of years away from really getting back to parity. They've made a lot of progress, but certainly not back to parity yet. Hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, but even better, make sure to follow us on Odyssey, follow us on Rumble, and text us 203-646-5159. Text the word Monopoly. You'll be subscribed. You'll get updates about when we're going live our latest videos, and we'll send you even a little goodie bag. And in the event that we all get banned from big tech, we'll still be connected.